Just go until it's totally obvious to you. Two sound waves colliding and canceling with each other. I'm so excited to continue our free tuning course online here with tuning octaves. And I'm really excited for this because I've put in a lot of work and research into getting a setup where I have our sound run through a filter on a separate track that isolates beats. Tuners listen to beats. If you haven't been able to hear beats, you definitely will hear them and you'll know what they are by the end of this video. Okay, last tuning video, I showed you with Landon's help how to start learning how to tune unisons. The unisons, super important. In my mind, next in line is learning how to tune octaves really well. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So, we're gonna tune F3 to F4 octave. I'm gonna use my mute here. I'm gonna mute off till it's one string that I'm listening to on each note. That'll help us get a, cl a clear signal. That way we're not uh, comparing too many frequencies at once, okay? We're gonna pretend that F4 is already in tune. So what I'm gonna have you do is put your tuning hammer on the correct pin. I want you to detune the octave to the flat side. I'm always saying to the flat side, Less likely you're going to break a string if you're on an old piano with rusty strings and who knows what. Detune it to the flat side until it's obviously out of tune, okay? Here we go. Okay, we can hear a lot of motion in that tone. And I hear a lot of and that's exaggerated, but that's, I like to vocalize that. That kind of helps me process in my brain what's going on. Just go until it's totally obvious to you. to you. So now I'm going to ease this F3 up till it sounds good to me like an octave. And I'm going to tune it a lot like the unisons. I just want a clean sound, not a lot of motion in it. It's getting better. So that's pretty darn good. Now, if we had no other frames of reference and we were just tuning this octave out of the blue, one frequency to one that's already been tuned, how do we know if we're right? We can set up a pattern of frequencies that will give us a high resolution view into the tuning of those two strings together. And it'll allow us to, with high, high, high accuracy, and I'm talking better than most people who might say they have perfect pitch, way beyond that. For an octave in this range of the piano, I want you to play a major third below the lowest note. So in this case we're tuning Fs, it's gonna be D3. D flat three, sorry. So when I play these two notes together, I have a filter plugged in that allows you to hear this frequency very clearly because these two notes collide at this harmonic here and they're slightly out of tune with each other and so we're hearing a pulsing pattern. Two sound waves colliding and canceling with each other. Now I'm going to play that same note with the note that we're tuning. So that has a speed to that pulse also. Listen to him again. Here's the upper note that's already tuned. And the lower note that we just tuned roughly. Upper. Lower. If you think this is cool, please give me a thumbs up, like the video, and that will help it spread to more people who might find this video of use to them. I want to show you what happens to the beats as we change the tuning of this F flatter or sharper, okay? So right now, the piano's tuned in such a way that if I tune this F3, if I tune it sharper, the beats will increase in speed. I'll demonstrate that. They become so fast that it almost sounds smooth again. But we can tell that, that interval does not sound like a major third. Now I'm going to coast down again. You'll hear the beat slow down and I'm going to carry on further than what we would normally do. You'll hear the beats be almost pure. 
That is the point in which the frequency of the D flat and the F are more in tune with each other. And then I'm going to carry further flat and see what it sounds like when we go to the flat side. You'll notice the beat speed increases the flatter we go from pure. So first of all, we're very sharp on this F. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, lower the tension of it, move the tuning hammer to the left here, and we're going to hear the beats decrease in speed. It's a very slow pattern. I'm going to keep going. And again, you heard it get faster and faster, close to that frequency. Okay. Now I'm going to pull it up, you'll hear it slow down again. Now listen to the speed of this upper one versus the lower. Now listen to the octave. Right, this F3 is way too flat. I'm going to tune it up back where we started and we'll carry on. Notice the beats are faster again. So you're going to find that pattern in everything that we tune on the piano. When you're comparing two frequencies that are close together but out of sync, the further to the flat side or the sharp side you go, the beats get faster. So the closer you get to those frequencies being in tune, the slower the beating gets and becomes almost a pure tone. And it does become a pure tone when those frequencies match. Now, in a lot of the videos, people have been confused and wondered, we haven't tuned this D flat. It doesn't matter. It serves as a set frequency. As long as it's close, it's going to give us a pulsing pattern. But it doesn't matter that it's in tune per se, because we're using the same frame of reference for both notes. Okay. Now, what I hear is that the speed of this is slightly, slightly faster than this lower one. So here's the upper again and the lower. Maybe almost the same. Okay, let's listen to the octave again. Pretty clean. There's a little bit of motion to that. If you pretend you're on a boat on the water, you know, and you're feeling the waves, some swells might be faster or slower. Here we go. I hope that doesn't make you seasick, but you know. With this pattern, we're using this harmonic, right, remember, to tune very accurately where we want this octave. I want you to get a chance to hear just the beats alone by themselves. So I'll go ahead and I will mute my other audio tracks and you'll be able to hear this. I'm going to play the upper note and the lower note in that order three times. Now, you might have noticed that this pulsing pattern isn't a totally consistent metronome pulse. It moves a little bit, it ebbs and flows, so your, our ear and our brain has to kind of take an average of it. When I play this interval, it's almost like it starts a little slower and then it seems to speed up. Now, I'm hearing everything, all the overtones, and you have the benefit of hearing just this frequency amplified above everything and so you might even have a more clear picture than I do but this is the way after you've been tuning for a while your brain will start to work it, it becomes more clear to you these overtones that you're listening to now as tuners we call them partials and we can go into that later but okay. yeah so what I hear in this one is that it's starts kind of slow it seems and then kind of rolls faster and this one kind of settles into maybe a slightly more slower rate and a lot of that is when you strike a string especially if you hit it hard the pitch isn't just straight it, it yeah right it kind of moves around a little bit 
and I'm exaggerating with my voice, but it does that on the piano. So we've tuned this octave. Sounds pretty good. Now, some people say when we tune octaves on the piano, they're wide, okay? I don't want you to go nuts on that right now, but this beat was slower than this beat. If you remember that, that shows us that it's a little bit wide. I'm gonna show you a little bit what I mean using this Sanderson AccuTuner that'll help us kind of see visually what's going on orally, okay? So I'm gonna set this to this pitch, which is F5. Okay, that's where we were hearing that those beats, okay? Now, I'm gonna take, we were saying that F4 was our note that we're referencing. We're gonna pretend F4 is in tune. So I'm gonna play F4, the machine's listening and filtering out just this frequency up here where it was beating, okay? I'm gonna manually offset the machine until those lights aren't spinning left. So those lights give us a pretty still pattern. So now we've set a reference. So this means that when I play this note, this frequency is right here, okay? Now I'm gonna play the F3. It's still listening to this frequency, but it's listening to it on this string. It's flatter. It's rolling to the left. That shows me that this note, that this octave is wide. Let's see how wide, okay? So the, dis the number display on the machine is negative 4.5. Okay, now I'm gonna manually stop these lights and see what the difference in the number is. So remember that, negative 4.5. Okay, so we're getting, we're getting about minus 7.8. So the difference between minus 4.5, minus 7.8, we'll do a little quick math, about 3.3 cents. So that's how much flatter this frequency is in this note than this note. But it sounds good to our ear. Let's see what it sounds like when we match those frequencies perfectly, okay? So I'm gonna move this back to minus 4.5, and I'm gonna tune this F3 till the lights stop. Okay, now we're gonna hear when this frequency of both notes is perfectly in tune with each other, what this octave sounds like. Ready? So now these are perfectly clean at this frequency. They're tuned right to each other. It's a very clean sound. Sounds like a tuned unison. Um, some pianos, it might work well, but in general, the overall scheme of tuning the piano, you want that octave to probably be just a little bit wide in general. At least I do. I like that sound, but you do have, there's some choice in tuning a piano. You have some options. So I'm gonna go ahead and nudge this down just a little bit and by ear and see where we get. I'm gonna go, again, I'm gonna go way flat till it's obviously out of tune, okay? starting to sound pretty good to me. Let's see what the number is. So after I heard those perfectly in tune, my ear kind of wanted to tune it a little more clean. Obviously, I'm only about 0.4 cents different. But I would, normally when I'm tuning, I would listen to this beat rate again. So I'd drop it down a little bit. about there. So which one's faster and slower and by how much? Don't get too frustrated if you can't hear this very clearly. It can be difficult and honestly when I tune now I just kind of get an overall sense of that pulse. I don't listen micro listen to this frequency usually. Just one feels more relaxed than the other, I know it's slower. Okay, let's listen to the octave. It's got a little bit of motion to it. Let's see what the number is. So 
So I, I think that's pretty close to where we did it before. Okay, so we've tuned the octave, we've checked it with the beats and gotten a feel for that. Now, when I first tuned it, I kind of hit it right on the money. What happens if you tune it and you're off? I wanna show how the beats can help guide you to where you need to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and tune this a little bit sharper. Okay, listen to this. It still sounds pretty good as an octave. Let's see what the beats say. Upper test. And the lower, which is what I changed. It's faster. Quite a bit faster than it was before. I'm gonna push it a little bit, make it even faster, but where our ear would still accept it. Even that we might accept as an octave. Now let's listen to the beats. Much, much faster. So this is just to illustrate how fine and how accurate the beats will help us tune a frequency. So as you're practicing, you can practice tuning an octave in this middle area, probably anywhere from O C down to F. Um, if you go outside of that, then the beat rate becomes slower or faster. And so for this particular check, it's a little bit harder to hear. And so for the other ranges of the piano, we use different checks, but we'll get into that later. So in general, you can practice tuning an octave. Now, how wide you make it, how pure, it actually doesn't matter at this point. You'll be learning to zero in how to tune an octave, how to manipulate it however you want, which will come into play later on. In this range of the piano, that's how you wanna tune this octave. You're like, what? This range of the piano, we'll get to that. I'm gonna show you everything. I've been through some of the online tuning courses, looked through them a little bit. People will kind of give you teasers and then say, now pay me a lot of money and I'll show you how to tune. I'm gonna show you everything totally free. When I had the opportunity to learn, I was really blessed to have the opportunity to get paid to learn. I want to pay that forward. So I intend to give you the full version of how to tune a piano by ear and also I'll show you how I do it by machine and software also. So stick around, follow these videos and you'll, you'll be glad you did. You can practice the octaves on your piano. Be brave. Take a risk. Take one note, knock it out of tune and uh, let me know how it goes. Well, I also know you're going to have more questions about the theory of the tuning and I'm going to try and stick to a more practical level, at least in this video run. If you want more theory, there are definitely resources out there. And as you make comments, I'll go ahead and publish those in the comments and other areas and replies. I want to show you something else that's important. As you're tuning, look how, look how I'm approaching the piano. If I was to play the piano, I'd probably set the bench somewhere here so that uh, my feet can reach the pedal comfortably and I have good leverage on the keys, okay? But if you tune this way, that's very awkward for your wrist. Basically, the, the most convenient way to pull for your body mechanics is this way. And you don't need to pull this way when you tune. When I approach it to tune, the bench is in tight, my knees under the piano. I'm getting as far up into this piano. I love the piano. I'm getting as far up into the piano as I can, okay? So this way, when I grab the wrench, I'm also to the right towards the treble side, I'm right-handed, so I'm to the right of where I'm tuning. So I can sit comfortably and straight, and I can manipulate the hammer in this direction. Even if you're just tuning your own piano and then you're gonna quit, it's gonna take you a long time, so you probably wanna be comfortable anyway. And you wanna learn how to do it the right way. You'll have more success tuning a more stable string when you're sitting this way, from my experience. Next, we're gonna show tuning fifths and fourths. So stay tuned for that and let me know what other kinds of things you want to see working on pianos. I'm an open book and I love to share. Thanks again.